tuning in to Brought House Sports. I am your host, Emily Cheddar Dog Dillion. Holy shit, the home opener against the Cincinnati Bengals turned out way better than expected thanks to a dominant Browns defense. At third and five, Joe Burrow gets sacked for a loss of two yards by Oba Okoronkwo, setting him to Cleveland's 49. Browns have the ball, and at third and seven on their own 17, Deshaun Watson scrambles right for a gain of 12. Watson tries scrambling again, only to be set for a loss of seven. A little while after, because the Bengals didn't do much, Nick Chubb does run for 17 yards to Cincy's 26. Browns fumble second and five, but the Bengals don't do much on their drive. The Browns get the ball back with 58 seconds left, and Watson passes deep to Amari Cooper for a gain of 20. First quarter ends scoreless. Second quarter begins with Deshaun Watson passing to Chubb, but losing two yards at Cincinnati's 24. Though Dustin Hopkins makes a 42-yard field goal. 11.59 left, and now the Bengals do something with Joe Mixon running for 12 yards. He follows it up with a 22-yard run to the right. Both teams don't do much gains in the next few drives because of the slick field and ball that they had to deal with. First and 10 at the Browns' own 33, Elijah Moore makes a run for a gain of 19 yards. A couple of good passes to Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones, and this eventually sets up with Deshaun Watson making a 13-yard run for the touchdown. Browns end the half 10 to nothing. Fast forwarding to 11:48, and Evan McPherson makes a 42-yard field goal with their only score in the game. First and 10 at their own 25, Watson makes a deep pass to the left to Elijah Moore for a gain of 33 yards. In the Browns' drive, Joe Burrow makes a 10-yard pass to Joe Mixon to move to the Browns' 43. They eventually get to the 33, and McPherson attempts a 51-yard field goal. The kick is no good. Nick Chubb makes a 10-yard gain since he's 49. This soon gets followed up with Deshaun Watson making a 13-yard run. Chubb also gets a 13-yard run to the Bengals' 21. This sets up a Hopkins 34-yard field goal, and the third quarter ends 13-3. First and 10, and Watson makes a short pass to David Njoku for a gain of 15 yards. This gets followed up with a 17-yard gain by Jerome Ford, who improves quite a bit since the fumble earlier in the game. This eventually gets followed up with a 43-yard field goal by Dustin Hopkins. Again, Burrow and the Bengals turn back into the Bungles with a sack from Miles Garrett. Browns come back on the field, and Nick Chubb makes an 11-yard run. Chubb makes a 4-yard run, and Watson makes a 3-yard pass to Harrison Bryant for the touchdown. Deshaun Watson makes a 2-point conversion, and the game is over. The Browns win the Battle of Ohio 24-3. In the Browns-Bengals game, the Browns held the Bengals' offense at 3 points, 142 net yards, 82 yards passing, only 1 play over 12 yards, and only 4 plays 10 yards or more. According to a measure of expected points added, or EPA, the Browns had the second best game after the Cowboys clinic against the Giants in week one. While the Browns offense had a below average performance, it wasn't awful thanks to Nick Chubb. The Steelers, whom Cleveland will be playing against next week, looked terrible in their EPA, and a bottom 10 offense could be expected. Somehow the defense being ranked below is surprising. Last week Thursday, there was some trash talking coming from wide receiver Jamar Chase of the Bengals. Despite not wanting to hear about Cincinnati's recent struggles with the Browns, Chase says, It's just a regular game to me. It's just the hooping and hollering about the Cleveland Browns. I was about to call them the Elves. If that's just a regular season game, then it's a damn shame that the Bengals are playing like the Bungles once again. Not only did players like Miles Garrett respond with words, but action as the Browns' defense dominated in a way that I have never seen before. If you don't live that down, Jamar, you better be ready for January 7th. When interviewed leaving the game, Chase continued to run his mouth by saying, It's frustrating because I called their ass elves, and we just got lost to some elves, so I'm pissed on that end. We missed opportunities, we didn't capitalize on that shit, and we lost. And that's his words, not mine. I feel like there's been an ego that's been tamed on Sunday afternoon, but we'll come back in the following weeks. The Cincinnati Bengals are now 1-5 against the Cleveland Browns in the Joe Burrow era. Also, Chase does need to deliver if he really wants to call the Browns elves, because really, they were dogs and they were hungry. Browns play the Bengals again in Week 18, uh, January 7th. The Browns' 24-3 win against the Bengals has been considered the worst game in Joe Burrow's career. Despite the wet and slippery game, Burrow played like shit, and his stats have shown. On Sunday's game, Burrow made 31 passing attempts for 14 completions for a total of 82 yards and a completion percentage of 45.2% and no touchdowns. 
Burrow right now has a quarterback rating of 20.3, which right now makes Patrick Mahomes look way better of a quarterback, and especially for Aaron Rodgers' case, despite the Chiefs losing to the Detroit Lions with a 70.5 rating for Mahomes in that game. Deshaun Watson finished the game with a 65.8 passer rating, making 16 completions out of 29 passing attempts for 154 yards and one touchdown. Steelers defensive tackle Tamarian oh, Hayward no. will There's be out for the Week 2 Monday Night Football game against the Browns. The Pro Bowlers suffered a groin injury during Schittsburg's Week 1 beatdown from the 49ers and will be out for a few weeks. Hayward is known for uprooting offensive linemen, and even Joel Petonio can't handle him. This will be a noticeable loss for the Steelers as they gear for the Browns to come to town this upcoming Monday. The Browns will still have to deal with Steelers linebacker TJ Watt, who they may need to do extra work now that Hayward is out. Bad news. Right tackle Jack oh, Conklin no. will be out for the down. rest of the season after tearing both his ACL and MCL during the browns bengals game. This is the second time that the 29-year-old had dealt with a season-ending injury in his four years with Cleveland. In 2021, he dislocated his elbow and then tore his patella tendon in his knee after just seven games that season. Head coach Kevin Stefanski confirmed the other day that Conklin will miss the rest of the season and requires surgery. With this in mind, the Browns will have to choose between playing either James Hudson III or rookie Dewan Dummy Thick Big Thanos Jones from Week 2 onward. This can negatively impact Deshaun Watson with this impact to the O-line. And before we go, we're going to talk about Jim Brown. In addition to the halftime ceremony for the Browns legend, Jim Brown, the team made another noticeable thing present. Jim Brown has been honored with the patch that features his number 32 and signature on all player jerseys. The Hall of Fame running back played for the Cleveland Browns from 1957 to 1965, where he was an All-Pro first selection for most of that time. He is widely regarded in the NFL as one of the best, if not the best running back in the game. In just those nine short years, Brown ran for 106 rushing touchdowns and received 20 of them in a pass. He was also the three-time NFL MVP, nine-time Pro Bowl selection, eight-time rushing yards leader, and made it to the 1960s All-Decade team. And thank you again for watching Brat House Sports. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddardog de Leon. Please like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell as I'd greatly appreciate it. It's also how you can find more of my videos and help me get through the algorithms as well. Once again, I'm your host, Emily Cheddardog de Leon, and I will see you next time. <laughs> of terrible football. We've got the ball. Let's see what we can do with it to start the half. Trying to do something here with Christian McCaffrey. Got a bruising block from Brandon Ayuk. Got another from Ray Ray McLeod. Turned it into a touchdown. It's a 65-yard lightning strike from McCaffrey.